Hello, hello. So when we talk about using ideas from behavioral economics into product, uh, we focus a lot on what is called choice architecture. How do you design a product in a way that fits with our mental capacity? In particular, we talk a lot about friction. And one of the big lessons from behavioral economics is that friction matters a lot. We have to think about people wanting to make progress and all the things that we do to slow people down and to understand that when we create too much friction, um, people are likely to drop out and not do what we want them to do. So uh, we focus a lot on choice architecture and, and friction. Uh, but it's very important to realize that um, friction is indeed bad, uh, but when we decide to reduce friction, we have to think about other things as well. And uh, in this uh, video, I want to focus on uh, one important distinction between cases that we should be very, very focused on reducing friction and cases where we might actually want to add friction. And what are those cases? Those are the cases where we know what the product is versus we don't know what it is. So imagine a product, and imagine a product that I'm signing up for, but I'm very clear about what the product is. Uh, maybe it's a, a new app for uh, reading books on my, on my phone. Okay, a new app for reading uh, books on my phone. Um, and in this case, I know what I'm getting and everything you add with friction. You ask me for my name and address and hobbies and all kinds of things like that. Every question is likely to get more people to drop out and not to participate. If you ask me for something complex, like a list of my top 10 favorite authors or a list of the uh, 15 books I love the most in my life or the three books I read most recently, Every one of those things will add a lot of friction and will not likely not work in favor of the app or the company who's producing the app. So the point is that when we sign up for a product that we know exactly what it is, friction is our enemy. We want to reduce friction. Hey, if, we, if these are questions we need to know, we can ask them later, but we don't want them to do it upfront. On the other hand, Imagine another product, also an app, also for reading books, the same product, but this one has some magic to it. Uh, maybe it figures out uh, which books are good for which mood. Maybe when somebody is sad, let's say, you know, I, I don't know about you, I, I, I start multiple books and I'm in, in the mid, middle of many of them. Maybe this app, is helping people manage multiple books and helping them think about which book would be better in which circumstances. Uh, by the way, this is a very interesting question. I, uh, for example, when I was in hospital, uh, you know, which, which, books, which books do people want to read uh, or listen, uh, when, listen to uh, when they are sad or in pain? Are those things that focus on other people's pain? Are they focusing on complete fantasy? Anyway, uh, let's say that this uh, second app is designed not only to give people books, but to match people's needs. Like the, the app kind of understand what people need. People need more calmness, more energy. They need more creativity. They need to fall asleep. The app kind of figures out what are people's uh, emotional needs and the app figure out from all the list of books that I have which book I'm going to write. Okay, now that one is not as clear. When I download the app, <laughs> I might not know exactly what it is. So now if I go quickly into the app, maybe I don't appreciate it as much. Maybe I don't know how to use it. Maybe there's some features I don't turn on. So when we know exactly what the app does, quick in low friction. But when we don't know what the app is, or whatever the product is. Um, now the sign-up process is also an opportunity for discovery. 
Now in the sign up process, we want to basically um, ask people questions that would get them to think about the magic of that app. So for example, a question could be, um, when you're depressed, uh, most people want books that actually transform them into a world of fantasy. Is this the case for you as well? Or to say, uh, when you feel a little tired and depressed, uh, are you more interested in books that are fast moving and um, less intense? Yes or no? Now, you see how asking these questions is increasing friction. These are difficult, complex uh, questions. But what they also do is they basically tell us, oh my goodness, now I understand what I'm getting. So the concept that I want to, to focus on is what we call a mental model. What is my mental model of this app or service? If my mental model is accurate, I know what I'm getting and that's what I'm getting, no problem low friction. But if my mental model is not accurate of what I'm getting, I don't understand the full extent I'm getting. There are hidden features of what I'm getting. The main benefit uh, is, is, not, is not in my mental model. I don't understand what this, what this service is. Um, for example, I think it's a regular bank. But in fact, it's a bank account that also helped me think about what kind of things I regret and therefore plan better my next budget. Oh, it's a bank account that also helped me negotiate with other people, um, like with a significant other uh, big purchases. The moment that our mental model is not a very good overlap with what the, the service is actually doing, now friction is both our enemies, but also our friend, because increasing friction can also help us increase the mental model and get the mental model to be to be better. Now, is friction always good? No, it's not always good. Um, but when the mental model, our mental model and the service real mental model are not aligned, we have to increase friction. We have to ask questions. We have to expand people's uh, mental model. It's not great, but if we offer, if we created something that is creative and ingenious and so on, uh, we better work on people to learn what it is. So if people have the accurate mental model, reduce friction. If people don't have the right mental model, we're sorry, we can't reduce friction. And what we have to do <coughs> is to create uh, more friction in order to create a better sense of what people are getting, to create a sense of appreciation for their getting, you know, to get people to set up themselves in the right way, to think the product in the right way, to understand when to use it, how to use it, to what extent, and so on. So that's the, the important thing. Mental model, do people have the right one or not? And then you make a decision about what you should think about friction and how you should, have, what should be your approach to friction. Okay, bye for now.